Hi, folks. Uh, let me start off uh, as other people join. Uh, I'll uh, run you through some of the rules and uh, we'll take it from there. Uh, so thanks for joining. Uh, welcome to the first quiz uh, by QFI of uh, this particular year. Um, uh, I will be streaming the quiz as well as uh, uh, sending the slides out to your uh, uh, respective channels. Uh, so uh, Let's quickly do a check to see if uh, everyone's clear on pounds, if the bot is working. So uh, can one person from each team do a test pounds, please? What you need to do is uh, type in exclamation P followed by your pounds answer and send it out. Yeah, I see team one's pounds. They claim they've already won. Hi, folks. Uh, let I see team six off, is pounds. Uh, other people join. Uh, I'll uh, run you through some of the rules and uh, we'll other teams. Over. One person from each of the other teams. Can you just uh, send out a test pounds, please? Teams two, three, four, five. Yeah, I see team three pounds. Team four pounds as well. So two and five. I see team five pounds, team two. To see if, uh, Great, so I have pounds from all the teams. Uh, can we also just do a quick check on the out. mic? Uh, so can one person from each team uh, yeah, just I unmute team themselves team and uh, they they say something? Hi, so team one. I see check, team check, check. Pounds. Yeah, round and clear. Uh, team two. Other teams, one person from each of the other teams, can you just uh, send out a test form? Team two. Hey, hi, can you hear me? Yeah, very clear. Uh, team three. Check. Right, team four. Someone from team four, can you unmute yourself and... Uh... Team four here. Team four, clear. Okay, team five. Hello, hi. Hi, Gigi. Uh, last team, team six. Uh, hey, Vinit. Hey, hi, Kishore. Yeah. Hi, Kishore. Okay, so let's start. Uh, um, okay, so those will be the rules. So uh, uh, there's a short uh, three uh, question written round, followed by 30 questions on bounce and pounds. Uh, uh, it'll be infinite bounce and pounds, uh, plus 10, minus 5. And uh, there are multiple part questions. So if there are multiple parts, you need to get all parts if you're pouncing. Otherwise, you'll get a negative five. Uh, 20 of the 30 questions are somewhere related to 2020, whether it's events or uh, people in the news uh, or books or movies or TV shows or something like that. And for those questions, uh, there'll be that mark that you'll see on the bottom right of the slide. Right, so uh, some of them are pretty obvious. In fact, most of them are pretty obvious that they are uh, on about 2020. But there are some where it's not explicitly called out. Uh, so in those cases, uh, watch out for the mark. Uh, uh, that will probably help you narrow down your guesses. Right. Uh, then blanks are indicative of size throughout the quiz. Uh, okay, points so won't be conserved. Uh, so, uh, uh, I will not uh, acknowledge short, partial uh, answers till uh, uh, the question round. is closed. Followed by 30 uh, and uh, finally, thanks to uh, Dinesh and Harish uh, for uh, guinea pigging the quiz. Uh, and uh, Harish has also and, uh, agreed to do the scoring. Uh, Harish, are you there? If there are multiple parts. Harish. I don't see Harish. Hi, is there Harish? Yeah, you he, hear me? Yeah, I can, uh, yeah. Okay, I can help you with scoring. Oh, okay, yeah. Thanks, Harish. Okay, so let's move on to the quiz. Question one. Okay, so uh, the first one is the written round. Uh, so the three questions uh, um, which are related to four novels by the same author, uh, all of which have been adapted for the screen. And this author has written six novels and uh, four of them, uh, uh, are, the questions are about four of them. Uh, it's quite simply, uh, what you need to do is identify the name of the uh, novels based on the uh, clues that are given. So uh, three questions, uh, 30 points, and an additional five points for uh, giving me the name of the author as well. Right? So 
now that's clear let me go to the first question so this will be written you can send me your answers as a pounds after all the three questions so wait until you see all the three questions and then send me a pounds so going to the first question okay so With let's the, just on uh, dp the, the yes, first one. just for illustration or uh, that's part of the question yeah that is part of the question those are the publication years of the novel that i'm talking about i will go into each of those questions Oh, just put it out so that you can have a timeline for this yeah so question one uh so on the surface this author's second book which was published in 1963 is a story of the protagonist's attempt to save his civilization but in the author's own words it is a very disguised autobiography uh, it according to him is an interpretation of his removal as a child from san francisco his crash landing in rural kentucky on his of his childhood uh, illness and also about his battle with uh, alcoholism so which book which is the only sci-fi book by the author that has been uh, uh, adapted to the screen so he's written two other sci-fi books which are the ones that i'm not asking questions about so of the three sci-fi books that he's written only this one has been adapted to the screen right and the image that you see is the cover of one of the editions of the book uh, which was uh, uh, released uh, post the movie adaptation and taking advantage of the popularity of the movie so for the first part you just need to tell me which is this 1963 book okay i will move on so Yeah. So, question number two. Uh, so, there are a lot of similarities between the author's life and that of the protagonist in another work that he wrote in 1983. Right? Due to his childhood illness, the author was drugged in a convalescent home three times daily uh, with phenobarbital, leading to his later alcohol addiction. The author, like the protagonist, found some solace by immersing himself into sport, although the choice of sport was different. Identify the book that's been making all the right moves recently. So this one, uh, as I said, is uh, a 2020 question, and uh, you would see that 2020 mark in all the questions which are related to 2020. Right? Okay. As you look at it, let me move on to the next question. So the third question. Uh, so this author's immersion into sport and the various characters he chanced upon when he was reflecting, when he was perfecting his play, formed the backbone of his debut 1959 novel. Uh, it was initially titled The uh, Lovely Green after an Andrew Marvel poem, but later changed to The Dash, uh, which is a single word referring to some of the shrewd gamblers uh, that he came across. This novel and its sequel from 25 years later have been adapted to the screen starring the same actor. Although the sequel proved more beneficial to the actor than the original. So identify the 1959 book. Uh, the cover uh, on the right was from the first edition of the 1959 debut novel and the 1984 sequel. So two parts here, uh, plus five for each part. So let me quickly go back so this uh, was a second book from 1963 it's the only sci-fi book by the author to be adapted to the screen and it is uh, according to him a very disguised autobiography the second one uh, again this book also had a lot of similarities to the author's life uh, and this one was from 1983 and this one is the one that's been making all the right moves uh, in 2020 and the last question so these two books one was a 1959 book which was his debut novel and uh, a 1984 book uh, uh, which was a sequel both of it uh, were adapted to the screen uh, starring the same actor so identify both books So that's the timeline. So there's a debut novel. There was a sequel in 1984. There was a second novel in 1963. And there are two other novels that he had written, which are not adapted to the screen, Mockingbird and the Steps of the Sun. And then there was a 1983 novel. So I'll give you 
another uh, 15 seconds and then move on to the answers. So this one has no negatives, so all teams uh, uh, bounce, but give me just one bounce. Um, all really, the answers. Yeah. Quick check. All three, um, I mean, the same writer, right? All. Yeah, all of them by the same author. Oh, thanks. You need to identify the author's name also for an additional five points. So it's a 35 point round. So team two, I, I see an answer from you, but I see only one uh, answer. So should I take that as the only answer? No, 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 don't, don't. We are sending a consolidated pawns. We sent one by mistake. Okay. So I have pounces from team six, team five, and uh, team one. So I'm waiting for pounces from uh, two, three, and four. I see a bounce from team four. I see a bounce from team two as well. Uh, team three. Yeah, I have team three's bounce as well. So uh, let's go to the answers. Uh, can one of you probably just unmute and give out the answers? Uh, anyone? No one wants to go for it. We pick some team which got it all right. So team six got it all right. So team six, do you want to give out the answers? I guess not. Okay, let me just move on to the answers. So uh, sorry, Vinit. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. Okay, so these are all books by Walter Davis, and those are the books. Uh, so let me give out the scores. Um, team one gets twenty-five points. Harish, you got that right. Team one gets 25 points. Yeah. Team two also gets 25 points. Team three gets uh, 25 points as well. Uh, team four gets 10 points. Team five, team five gets it's all right. Uh, no, they didn't get the author's name, so they get 30 points. Uh, team 6 gets uh, 35 points. They they got everything right. Nice job, Team 6. So, Harish, you got all that right. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, how much did Team 5 get? Team 5 got 30. They didn't get the author, they got the other parts right, so they get 30. Okay, and Team 6? Team 6 get it all right, so they get 35. Okay, right. So that was the return round, everyone on the board. So let's move on to uh, the clockwise round. So we'll start with uh, team one and everything will be on pounds. Okay. Okay, so team one's question. Uh, so this movie deals with uh, a writer suffering from an unnamed medical uh, mental illness that leaves him outwardly in a catatonic state while living par multiple parallel lives in his mind. So basically various paths he could have pursued if he hadn't been bedridden, such as a life in Mexico or a period of uh, creative solitude in Greece. So those are things that uh, he thinks about uh, when, he is, uh, uh, when he is in a coma, right? Uh, all you need to do is identify this movie's name and the uh, movie's name is a play on the title of an uh, often misunderstood poem about choices which is written around 100 years ago uh, and the movie's title is uh, in a it's just a plural in a sense of uh, the title of the poem so think about uh, uh, what uh, as mentioned the first paragraph, uh, various paths he could have pursued if he hadn't been bedridden. 
and uh, think of a poem that uh, fits with that. Just stay on the slide, yeah. Okay, so I have pounds from team four. It's team one's question. So any of the other teams are you intending to pounce? Uh, Vinod, I thought we had already pounced team six. Yeah, I saw team six pounds as well. Yeah, right. I have team six pounds. Uh, team so, four also pounced. Yeah, I see team four and team six have pounds. So other teams, uh, uh, two, three, and five, do you want to pounce? Once again, we need just team three. Just give a few seconds. Sure. Ashwin, do you want to bounce? Are you in the thinking of bouncing? Uh, if so, I... Yeah, I already bounced. Okay, I got your bounce. Um... Uh, sorry. Um, Ashwin, um, I I understand what you're saying, but uh, let me just give you one more chance and say this is a plural of the title of the poem. Of a poem. Just a second. So I've closed pounds. I'm just waiting for uh, team three's uh, revised pounds, if any. Okay, I have uh, team three's pounds as well. So team one, go for it. The roads less traveled or taken. The roads less taken. I will give it to you. The roads not taken, but uh, I will give it to you. Let's not be in love about it. Uh, so Harish, I've given the pounds points. Uh, uh, can you just give ten points to team one on the bounce? Oh yeah, I've done it. I, I'll take care. Okay, great. Uh, so ten points to team one. Uh, teams uh, uh, two, four. Not sorry. Sorry, it's teams uh, four. Three and uh, six get uh, ten points as well. Direct will be to team uh, two. Okay. okay. This is again a simple question. Uh, let me just read through it, uh, uh, and then I'll tell you uh, if there's any questions if you have. So. How a real life dash may dash the world's biggest product in a subsegment. So you need to fill that up with some subsegment, sub uh, uh, product subsegment. There's an article about uh, uh, dash's domination in a certain market subsegment for a long time, thanks to some questionable, if not underhand, business practices across the years. In this year, when everyone has been cooped at, cooped at home, uh, leading to an increase in revenue across the market subsegment, this dominance has been more pronounced. Uh, the Dash's parent company declared a 21% revenue uh, jump in revenue in the sub subsegment uh, year on year, with Dash contributing the lion's share. Right? All those blanks that you see are all the same word, just one word. It's all the same word, right? Uh, so fill in the blank or identify this product uh, that I'm talking about here, and also identify the parent company which was founded in the 1920s and initially named after the three sibling founders. The name was uh, later, I think sometime in the 1960s, shortened to make it uh, a simpler and easier to pronounce one. 
So all you need to identify is one fill in the blank, which is the name of a particular product and the parent company which uh, sells a particular product. Read through that. Uh, uh, the title uh, it does make sense. There's no typo there. So think of something that would actually fit that title, a product, and think of a, a product subsegment which has uh, been making a lot of revenue uh, uh, because of people being in lockdown, sitting at home. Uh, there's been surprisingly uh, a huge uh, jump in revenue in this particular uh, product subsegment. So the question is of team two. I will uh, give it another uh, five seconds. So if anyone is intending to pounce, I see a pounce from team one. If anyone else is intending to pounce, can you let me know in the next five seconds? Five, four, three, two, and one okay i'm closing pounce uh team two go for it team two is this uh is this cock industries koch and uh the product <laughs> no i don't have an idea about the product actually it's a guess okay fine uh team three One second, maybe. Yeah. Uh, I will say the product is. Uh, mm, some uh, uh, shots, basically. From shots. Okay. Shots is what you said, huh? Yeah. Um, like okay. boxer shots. Okay. Okay. And do you want to give the name of a company? Mm, no, no idea. Uh, we'll say Peloton, but we know it's not right. But it's Peloton. Okay. Team four. Uh, so this is team four. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay, I, I think there was a guess that the product is Monopoly and the parent company is a short form of uh, three brothers, which became Hasbro. That's perfectly right. So that is 10 points to team four. This is indeed Monopoly, which has been doing really well over the last year. All board games have been doing well. Uh, Monopoly especially. So 10 points to team 4 Harish and uh, uh, team 1 gets plus 10 as well uh, which I've already awarded so you just need to award the uh, bounce points. Right. So 10 points to team 4 next direct will be to team 5. Okay, so Dash is a nickname that has been given to a bear that has escaped from captivity multiple times during the last year, including one where uh, he managed to climb over three electric fences and a four meter high barrier. Although the name means a completely different animal, the reference in this instance to the, is to the flighty nature of the bear, similar to a protagonist uh, of a 1969 book. So which book? Uh, the image that you see on the right uh, is the first cover of that book. Um, let me make it very clear. This got nothing to do with the Rorschach test. Maybe it is, but uh, uh, that is not what you're looking for. So you will have to look at that and figure out what you can make out from there. And then come up with a name. The, uh, the word or the name is not a English name. It's not the English name of that particular animal. Uh, it's another animal 
which has got a, a the flighty nature of uh, the protagonist in that book uh, people felt that that was similar to uh, what the bear was doing uh, when it escaped multiple times from captivity and hence uh, the bear was nicknamed thus so you, you just need one word is it just one word whatever is the blank which is the name of the book so i see pounces from team 6 team 5 and team 3 uh so this is team 4's question so 1 and sorry yeah 1 and 2 do you want to pounce oh sorry it's team 5's question so uh, oh hey, no pounce way yeah. yeah okay so you can answer on the mic so other teams teams 1 2 and 4 do you want to pounce if you're intending to pounce can you call it out in the next 5 seconds 5 4 3 2 and 1 okay i'm closing pounce so team 5 you can say your answer out on the mic papion this is indeed papillon which means butterfly and is reference to the book uh, so uh, harish i've already awarded points to team 5 so you don't need to do anything on this particular question right uh, so now the question will be to team 6 let me just send out the slides okay so uh team sorry whose question is this harish was ji 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 was team 5 right okay yeah so team 6's question um uh, so after after successful marketing strategy for the design of last season which is 2019 20 uh, uh, third jersey Uh, this club has applied the same strategy for this season as well uh, while the 2019 uh, 20 strategy was targeted towards one specific player uh, one specific player in that particular team the 2020 and 21 strategy is targeted toward a, towards a bunch of players who make a significant chunk of the team's roster right so it's a two part question one you need to tell me which team has applied this sort of strategy and uh, second uh, give me a bit of an explanation uh, preferably uh, with uh, one proper noun but even if you don't have that proper noun if you give the rest of it i'll give you points but ideally you would have a proper noun for that one player that i'm talking about there uh, you you can uh, uh, give me some explanation that's uh, good enough even if you don't have the actual name of that person right uh, the uh, whatever lettering that you see is just the sponsors to so don't go down that route i would instead uh, ask you to look at other elements uh, of the jersey nothing minute you don't have to uh, squint to look at any specific element just look at it and tell me how this particular uh, strategy in terms of uh, their third jersey would help them in increasing their inter- international fan base the two parts which uh, team what kind of strategy are they applying here the question is to team 6 considering i've not got any guesses any bounces uh, let me also add that uh, what you need to be looking at is just the colors right you don't need to be looking at anything specific on the uh, jersey look at the colors and uh, see if uh, that can help you figure out uh, the strategy of this particular team 
Okay, what is this about the proper noun? I didn't get that. So, what... so there is one. So the twenty nineteen twenty twenty strategy was targeted towards one specific player, right? So ideally, your answer should have the name of that player. But I'm saying even if you don't know the name of the player, uh, I would give you points for the explanation. For the points, do you need that player or uh... not necessary? But I need the name of the team and I need an explanation about uh, uh, what the strategy is. The name of the team is definitely needed. So anyone intending to pounce, I'll close pounds in uh, five seconds. Five. Uh, we need one second. And this is yeah. Team three, yeah. Yeah. Just. Uh... Okay. So I'll just wait for team three's pounce. I'm not taking any other pounces. Uh, team three, can you send in your pounce uh, if you're doing it in the next five seconds, please? Team three. Okay, I have uh, team three spawns. Uh, team six, go for it. Team six. The team, yes, the team is Wolves, uh, Wolverhampton Wanderers. Okay. Uh, and the reference is to the fact that they're owned by a Chinese. Yeah, Keshav, okay. do you have anything? Keshav, do you have anything? They have their own by a Chinese uh, company. Okay. And this is to do that. Uh, proper noun, uh, Keshav, do we have any proper nouns? No, I will move okay. on. I didn't, I didn't okay, ask for a proper noun anyway, but I'll move on. So, team one. Team one. So we, we will say that uh, uh, we'll say this is Liverpool uh, okay. and we'll say that the proper noun that you're looking for is uh, Mo Salah, Mohamed Salah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and the strategy is essentially they are uh, incorporating, uh, say, you know, the flag or flag colors, or national colors of uh, those, uh, you know, African Arabic countries uh, to increase their fan base in that. Okay. Country. Okay. Okay, so the the pan African flag colors is what they're using to increase the fan base there. Is what no, not pan African flag colors. The, but colors of uh, maybe Afri the, uh, the yes. northern northern African countries which are predominantly Arabic, like Egypt and all okay. of that. Yeah, yeah. Egypt, Libya, uh, Tunisia, and so on. Yeah. Okay. Fine. I'll move on. Team two. Hey, can you hear me? Yeah, I can now. Oh, yeah. So we'll go with the Wolves and Portugal. Right? These are the colors of the Portugal flag. So there are a bunch of Portuguese players in the, on the team. Okay. And this is supposed to kind of widen their uh, the, the, their Portuguese fans, fan base. Okay. Um, so there are two strategies, right? Uh, uh, can you give me a little bit more if you have anything? So, uh, the coach is also Portuguese. Okay. And uh, I mean, like that's we're just trying to get something from the previous answers. That's the only okay. thing we have. Okay. So, uh, uh, team three. Hey, we bounced and got next, but we can okay. go. Okay. <laughs> no, no. Okay. So, team team four. Team four. Uh, team four. I think we're going to go with uh, similar to team two. We're going to say that uh, the color is Portugal for the fact that majority of a lot of players in the Wolves team are from Portugal. And the left one, the 2019-20, the strategy was that uh, it's green for Mexico because uh, I think uh, Raul Jimenez was from Mexico and he was their standout player at that time. That is the complete answer. So team four gets the entire uh, thing right. So I'll give them 10 points uh, to team four, five points to team six. Uh, and uh, I will give, uh, uh, 
Oh, seven team points two. to team two. It's a nice answer from team four. Uh, the direct will be to team five. Okay, so one of Guardian's best long reads of the year was about a guy named Paul Alexander, who having survived one deadly outbreak when he was six years old, did not expect at 74 years of age to find himself threatened by another one this year. Uh, thanks to a technique called uh, uh, glossopharyngeal breathing, Alexander has some sem had some uh, has some semblance of a normal life. He even became the first person to graduate uh, from a Dallas high school without physically attending a class. What is the six word six word title of the article? One word changed uh, from the title of the third part of a novel serialized in the 1840s. Uh, as an additional clue, uh, while the movements of both Alexander and the main character from the novel uh, uh, were restricted, Alexander's restriction was voluntary, while the title of character uh, was forced. Uh, uh, it was a forced restriction, allegedly to maintain a cloak of secrecy. So I don't need the name of the uh, novel. Uh, work on uh, uh, what uh, uh, all uh, the information that you have about uh, uh, Alexander and come up with a, a nice pun, which on the name of the uh, novel, which is just one word changed from uh, the name of the novel. Team six has a quick bounce. Team three, we are bouncing, Justin. Okay. Team three also says they'll bounce. The question is with team five. Uh, any other teams bouncing? Uh, let me know in the next uh, five seconds. Uh, otherwise, I'll close bounce. Team one is bouncing. Team one is bouncing. So I'm waiting for bounces from one and uh, three. And I'll close bounce in three, two, one. Uh, Sinath, could you go on mute? I'm hearing a lot of feedback from your end. Yeah, I have pawns from one as well. Team three, just waiting for your pawns. I have team three spawn as well. So, team five, go for it. Team five. Yeah, yeah, just one second. We're just, uh, yeah, our guess is the man in the iron lung. That's perfectly right. So 10 points to team uh, uh, five as well. Uh, and teams one, three, and six get 10 points as well. So this is indeed man in the iron lung, which is uh, uh, a play on the man in the iron mask. Uh, so 10 points to those teams, and the direct now will be to team six. Uh, X describes his recent project as being about dharma and about the remorse that Y felt. He goes on to say, the transform Y is central to our democracy in so many ways, from the symbols to the ideas that we have embraced. We also have this wonderful material that Y gave us in the form of his dash, which are about ethical and political social life. So I thought, uh, why not make art out of it? And that is when the idea of composing came up. Identify X, whose project is based on certain artifacts that Y spread across the country. Uh, also, identify the name of the project uh, or fill in the blank. It's a one word uh, name that you need to give me. And identify Y as well. So three parts. Uh, identify X, uh, who's this uh, person uh, talking about his recent project. Uh, identify Y, uh, who's inspired by. And the name of the project uh, which is basically those artifacts that are spread across what exactly are they called so for that blank even if you don't have that exact word uh, if you can give me a short explanation that will also do so the question is to team six i have a quick bounce from team one and i'll leave it open for another uh, 10 seconds and I will close bounds. Any other teams, if you want to bounce, let me know in the next five seconds. Five, four, three, 
two and one uh, close bounds but before uh, team six before you answer uh, uh, Gigi, can you uh, you've not given me three parts you've given me only two parts can you yes, send me Yeah, I have uh, uh, team five complete pounds. So, so team six, go for it. Uh, we'll say that uh, X is uh, TM Krishna, uh, Y is Ashoka, and the pro project is called the Edict Project. Full 10 points to team six as well. So teams one, uh, uh, five, and six get 10 points on this, 10 points on this. Uh, Harish, I hope you have that uh, bounce thing. Yeah, I guess you. Okay, great. Uh, and the direct now will be to team one. Okay, so the image is from a non profit book titled Excess Alphabet. Uh, for which X and the poet Sir Stephen Spender invited a number of British and American writers to contribute original text to accompany letters of the alphabet specifically drawn by X. So all you need to then identify is who is X. Uh, so you see the alphabets that he's created there. Uh, so although this these alphabets that he's done is probably not reminiscent of his style, uh, you should still be able to work out his name from the image. So look at that image. There is something that's been blanked out on the top. The first row has been blanked out. So look at it. And I'll give you uh, uh, probably uh, 10, 15 seconds to try and see if you can work it out. Even you don't need to know artistic styles or anything. You should be able to work it out. Okay, I don't have any pounces. So if any of you are looking at, uh, oh, I have pounds from team four. Anyone else, uh, if you are in the process of working it out, can you uh, call it out? A few more seconds, you know, just give a few more seconds. Sure, okay. A yeah. few more seconds for us also. Yeah, okay. Uh, Vineet, what did you say about the image you said? So the image has got the alphabets that were created, but I've blanked out the top row, right? So using that and what you see in the image, you should be able to work out who actually did this. You don't need anything more. So I have pounces from teams four and six. It's team one's direct. Two, three, hey, and. If you want to bounce, give me a second. Sure. Uh, we are also bouncing. Okay. So I'm waiting for pounces from three and five. GG or five, right? Hey, yeah, wait, 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 pounds, pounds. Yeah. So I'm just. Uh, I got a pounce from five. Uh, I will have to take that pounce. Okay. Okay. So team one, go for it. Uh, we'll say Milton Glazer. Milton Glazer, no. Team two. <laughs> no idea, actually. Is this? Uh, I know this is probably wrong. MC Escher. Not MC Escher either. Uh, so this is Hockney. 
so those are the letters of the alphabet which are left so if you look at it carefully those h o c k n e y are the ones that are missing in the list of alphabets so ideally could have uh, made an anagram out of it so good 10 points to teams 4 uh, 6 uh, and 3 uh, unfortunately a negative to team 5 uh, so because no one answered the question will stay with team 1 Okay, so the image is from a 2020 TV series, uh, which is a reboot of a popular 1970s, 80s TV series set in Yorkshire, and based on a, a collection, multiple collections of books by James Alfred White. Sorry, James Alfred Wright, not White. Uh, both the TV series and Wright's first uh, book collection are named after the second line of an Anglican hymn, a line that best fits the theme of Wright's books. following the success of the first book collection other collections named after the first third and the fourth lines followed so how do we know uh, how do we better know alfred white i'm not sure if it's white or right i've written multiple spellings there so uh, forgive that uh, so you need to tell me how we better know this person uh, the author and also tell me give me the first two lines of this hymn so the first book collection that he wrote was uh, named after the second line but then other book collections named on the first third and the fourth lines were also uh, created so question is to team 1 i don't know if i have a bigger image i don't so look at the image the image helps and it's a reboot of uh, a popular uh, tv series which is based on a popular book collection and it's based on the author's uh, uh, actual experiences so it's kind of a, a biography although there's some dramatic elements probably added to it but it's based on his actual life great answer by team 6 who get everything right uh direct is with team 1 uh any other teams uh, uh team 4 also gets it right nice one uh teams 2 3 and 5 if you intending to pounce uh, call it out in the next 5 seconds 5 4 3 2 one okay closing pounce team 1 we'll say this is james heriot and the first two lines are all things bright and beautiful all creatures great and small that is exactly right so 10 points to team 1 as well uh, teams 4 and 6 uh, got 10 points as well and the next question will be to team 2 harish can you award 10 to team 1 please okay so a uh, 2016 article uh, titled why the secretive tech startup could be the next dash discusses similarities between two controversial secretive companies in the same domain the similarities called out uh, uh, are uh, investors who are kept in the dark on the technology ceos who are or were not scientists uh, toxic work environments uh, uh, mass exit of uh, high level executives etc Uh, despite this negative comparison to the first company which is the blank so the blank is the name of the first company that i'm talking about the second company had a phenomenal ipo in 2018 with a valuation of 7.5 billion usd it got a it got a further shot in the arm through a 483 million investment earlier this year and valued at 60 billion so uh, three parts to the question Uh, identify both questions of both companies uh, uh, one that is a blank and the other one uh, uh, which is being compared to that particular company in the blank uh, and also identify the ticker symbol of the uh, second company uh, which refers to a key component of the technology that the company works on exclusively 
to three parts so you will be uh, three 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 points and uh, whichever team gets the last part right will get four points uh, so two companies and the ticker symbol of the second company the question is with team two I'll give you another five seconds I'll okay I have a pounce from team four and I will close pounds in five four three two one okay pounds closed team two go for it Okay, the first company is Theranos. The second one is we, we are guessing Moderna, and uh, the ticker symbol is mRNA. That's perfectly right. So ten points to Team Two as well, and ten points on the pounds to uh, Team Four. Pounds is closed. Shall we pounds? Pounds was closed, and it's been answered as well. I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, the direct now will be to team three. Okay. Uh, so explain the story behind this photo uh, that he calls the four dash. The photographer Alan Shaler said, I had just been to an exhibition of excess work uh, at Tate Modern uh, and was feeling quite inspired. I can't remember how many images I took, but uh, with this one aligned, uh, with this one, everything aligned. I was concentrating on the distance and timing the subjects and the timing of the two subjects in the foreground uh, in relation to the advert. The advert is the one that I blanked out and got the third subject in the background for free. So simply tell me uh, whose uh, work inspired this uh, photograph, uh, which is also the blank. Just a one word name is all I'm looking for. Look at the image. The image is very helpful. And uh, work on the fact that this guy had just been to Tate Modern. So that can probably help you uh, restrict your uh, line of guesses. The image is probably the most helpful bit. So he called it the four dash. So the three people there. The fourth is in the advert, which is the one that I've blanked out. So direct is to team three. And I will close pounds in five, four. Yeah, what's the what's team? This team three. Just, just a second. Okay. Team six about team six Okay, so I'll just wait for team six's pounds. Uh, I have pounds from team two. One is, and open. one is also pouncing, and I will close pounds with that. Uh, I'm just waiting for team uh, one's pounds. After that, uh, uh, I'll move to team three for their guesses. Team one, waiting for your pounds. Siddhant, could you go on mute? Uh, I'm hearing a lot of static. Maybe it's not Siddhant. I don't know where. Yeah, okay. So team one, waiting for your answer. One second, literally one second. Uh, we will take the Okay, I have team one spawn, so team three, go for it. Team three. Okay, uh, sorry, if I didn't realize. Uh, you're saying uh, Margaret. Margaret, which is what uh, team one said and got a negative. Team uh, four.
four. I think we'll go with uh, Giacometti. Giacometti is perfectly right. So if you look at those figures walking, that is exactly what he was going for. So nice 10 points from team four. Uh, and the direct now will be to team five. Okay, so this building that you see is the, uh, it's called the Rotunda building and it's within a university campus. And this along with certain other structures uh, in the vicinity is classified as a world heritage site. And it's one of the few modern man-made structures in a world heritage list. So which other famous nearby structure is named as part of this uh, uh, UNESCO world heritage site? That's one part. For the second part, uh, uh, look at this building specifically and tell me what it is modeled on. So quite simply, this is a building within a particular university campus, but there's another building which is not within the campus, but it's not very far. Uh, and that is also included as part of uh, this UNESCO World Heritage Site. So which other structure and what is this building modeled upon? So basically, uh, you're saying that these two form uh, UNESCO Heritage Site. Yeah, these two along with some other buildings as well. Fine, fine. When you say modern versus not modern, you are yeah. Are you don't uh, it's not uh, something in the current century. I'm still calling it modern. If it's uh, it could probably be uh, 19th century, 18th century, I have the late 18th century. I'm still still considering that. So don't think too much about that. You could probably ignore that bit. Just focus on this thing. Uh, and as I've not received a bounce from any team, I will probably give the name of the university. This is in the University of Virginia campus. Team five question. And I have a bounce from team one. Um, if any other teams are bouncing, let me know in the next five seconds. Five, four, three, two, and one. Okay, bounce closed. Uh, team five, go for it. Yeah, our guess is the White House is the other structure. And, okay. Uh, and uh, the building is modeled on the Parthenon. Parthenon, okay. Team six. Uh, Manu, uh, do you want to say it out? Or Abit? Yeah, no, what are we going with for the... <laughs> the residence is... Uh... Right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay, we'll go. This is Monticello. Uh, Thomas Jefferson's residence, Monticello. Okay. And the um, nearby house is... Um, so... No, the other part... the pantheon. Okay, Pantheon. The Pantheon. Pantheon. Yeah, that is the full 10 points. This is the Monticello and Pantheon. Gigi, not Parthenon, of course. So, so <laughs> 10 points to <laughs> 10 points to team six uh, and 10 points to team one as well. Let me just quickly move on to the next slide. The direct will be to team one. Okay. Team one's question. Uh, so Guardian has compared this recent movie about America's 60s and 70s generation whose economic future was shattered by the 2008 crash with another work set during okay, similarly. We can't see the slightest thick one, so. Uh, you're not able to see it now? No, no, it's fine. No, it's fine. Because okay. uh, it was just doing the last answer. Yeah, fine. Okay, fine. Let me restart. Uh, so the Guardian has compared this recent movie about America's 60s and 70s generation whose economic future was shattered by the 2008 crash with another work set during similarly unstable times in the 30s. 
this movie deals with the impoverished uh, uh, impoverished uh, middle class who can't afford to retire but can't afford to work while maintaining a home as well and hence uh, are becoming a new american tribe roaming the country in camper vans in which they sleep looking for seasonal work in bars restaurants and in this film specifically in a gigantic uh, amazon warehouse in nevada so two parts what is the name of this particular movie and for the second part which work uh, from a bit over 80 years it is is it being compared to think of the fact that uh, this is a, a middle class uh, who taken to uh, roaming around the country in camper vans uh, look at this images that you see there uh, see if that kind of uh, relates to uh, uh, something else uh, uh, from the uh, 1930s give me one answer give me two answers name of the movie and which other work it's being compared to this question is to team 1 uh, i have answers from 6 and 2 and 5 uh, so 3 and 4 if oh. you're pouncing one second uh are you whose question is it it's one's question okay uh, oh. yeah we will pounce okay so i'll just wait for three pounds i'm assuming four is not pouncing so i'll just close pounds with uh, team three pounds team three waiting for your pounds okay i have a pounds from team three as well uh so team uh, one go for it the movie is called nomad land and the work from nearly 8 years back is the grapes of wrath yeah that's a full 10 points to team one as well okay and uh, the direct now will be to team two right uh, so these are three of uh, uh, four genera of monkeys that make up a set commonly known as odd dash monkeys uh, so all you need to do is fill in that blank and then identify the name of the fourth uh, which i have not shown that is arguably the oddest in that list so look at those images look at the name of the genus that are given there and give me two parts if you get one you should ideally get the other the blank is a very simple word don't think of anything complicated gg i need two parts i need you to fill in the blank as well yeah i have pounds from team 5 uh this is team three also pounds team 3 also will pounds team 3 will also pounds uh are uh, this is team 2's question so teams 1 one... team 1 is also team 1 is lots of pounds right team i have four is pouncing okay four is also pouncing i guess everyone's pouncing six is pounced okay so just waiting for team 1's pounds okay i have all the pounces so team 2 go for it um i guess odd nosed monkey and proboscis yeah so i think everyone gets it uh, this uh, round so 10 points to everyone uh, harish you may have to just give points to team uh, uh, two alone i think i've given points to the others this is odd nose monkey and proboscis monkey and the next question is to team three right uh, so uh, starting on with this quote by someone so this person says uh, put someone in country tweeds and they become horsey put someone in period dress and they uh, they become part of history i didn't want to do that to something else right some or someone else right uh, commenting on the fact that there are plenty of the opposite around the person quoted some examples uh, such as the elgin marbles uh, uh, michelangelo's david uh, uh, and the uh, shelley memorial which is the one that you see in the image right uh, though it is rather small 
that's specifically what her what the quote is so all you need to tell me is uh, whose comments are these and what are these comments in defense of uh, uh, something that has uh, caused a lot of controversy and it's been all over the news in the last couple of months so two parts who and what are these in uh, uh, defense for and for the second part also i need a proper noun so I, your answer if you're pouncing needs to have two proper nouns uh i'm staying on this image you will have a larger image of uh, the shelly memorial on your uh, team channels the uh, quick question when so this uh, shelly memorial is just an example is it so it's the con yes. it's nothing to the controversy itself right no it's got nothing to controversy but that person is calling out uh, some examples of uh, okay. the opposite right one of which is the shelly memorial and i'm just giving you an image of the shelly memorial for you to see if you can work it out of okay. what she's talking about right so when this person is actually linked to this right this is not a third sort of neutral commentator this is a person who's talking about yeah the person is defending uh, actions that uh, have caused a lot of controversy it's not a third person commenting about it So this is team 3's question. Uh, the larger image should definitely help. And uh, if you can try and figure out uh, what is kind of common between uh, those three examples that have been quoted, the Elgin Marbles, uh, Michelangelo's David and the Shelley Memorial. For whose comments, what answer are you expecting? who is talking about all this right so these are all quotes by someone right put someone in country tweets uh, uh, so that's a quote by the person the same person is also saying there are other examples such as the elgin marbles uh, michael anjus david so is someone talking about it so who is that person so this is a question to team 3 and i will close pounds and Five, four, three, two, one. Okay, closing pounds. Team three, go for it. Hey, one second. Uh, this is uh, th this is a statue of a naked woman. Uh, I suppose a naked man seen in David and uh, I've seen here and all that. And the statue is that of uh, uh, one second. Uh, Emmeline Pankhurst. Okay. And, and who is uh, making these comments? Um, um sculptor want of a better guess we'll say, i mean not we'll just say uh, gomli gomli okay uh, team 4 team 4 do you have a guess uh, team 4 here uh yeah. the sculpture is uh, that of mary wollstone craft the naked lady which was shown and uh, which attracted a lot of uh, negative comments the okay. person who has uh, uh, must be the sculptor we don't have a name for that okay i will move on team 5 uh we just guess uh, crazy i mean for the sculptor or artist and uh, um, the first part first sorry part. the second part the second part first part is uh, yeah is we're saying it's crazy i mean okay and yeah we just say mary was on cut for whatever for say okay team 6 manu yeah right this is this is uh, maggie hambling the sculptor on the mary wilson craft sculpture yeah that's the full 10 points so 
this is Maggie Hamling talking about uh, the Wollstonecraft uh, sculpture. So 10 points to team uh, six and uh, five points to team four uh, who came up uh, with everything except, except the name of uh, the sculptor. Uh, and the direct now is to team one. Uh, the last question of the clockwise round. So this is going to be a video. So you need to be on the stream to be able to uh, uh, see this. Uh, I'm going to play you a song, which is from, uh, which is originally written in the 1940s. Uh, but what I'm going to play you is a cover from much later. Uh, this song inspired uh, 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 something else uh, uh, from the 1960s, another song uh, which was featured in a 1960s movie. And this 1960s movie uh, with an ensemble cast uh, is even now considered to be one of the finest comedy movies uh, in the language uh, in which it was made, right? Uh, so you, you need to identify this song. Uh, if you are not able to come up with the name of the song, if you're just going to give me the name of the movie, on the bounce, you will have part points. On the bounce, I would need the name of the song, right? So this is team, whose question was this? Team one's question. So I'm gonna start playing it. It's a one minute clip. So please look and listen carefully. So that's the clip. So uh, uh, team one's question. Anyone wanting to bounce? I will close bounds in five. We are just bouncing. Four. This is team five. Team five is bouncing. I'll wait for team five bounce. If any other teams are bouncing, let me know in the next three seconds. Three, two, one. Close bounce, just waiting for team five bounce. Yeah, I have team five bounce, so team one, go for it. Team one. Hey, hang on, Bob. Team one, do you have an answer? Uh, we will right. say that, uh... No, I don't know. Um, Narendra, you have some answer, huh? Okay. I will have to we, pass we, you. You can say the movie is uh, Padosan. Okay, and, and the song... let me let me put you out of your mystery and move on. Team two. Uh, this is Anubhavam Pudinai from Kadri Kanera Mila. That's the perfect answer. Uh, let me just play the song. Oh. Oh, 
So good 10 points to team 2 uh, and uh, 10 points to team 5 as well uh, on the pawns who pawns uh, almost immediately. Uh, so uh, we'll go anti-clockwise now. Uh, you can look at your scores uh, uh, whenever you want to by typing in uh, exclamation mark followed by scores. Uh, so the direct now will be to team 6 and open on the pawns. Okay. 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 So this chair, uh, which is now part of the Victoria and Albert Museum, um, it is now part of the Victoria and Albert Museum due to its use in a set of photographs by Louis Morley in, in 1963 at the height of uh, fame or infame of the model. Right. Talking about how the photo uh, or photos came about, Morley said, uh, uh, this photograph was one of a, a series of publicity shots for an intended film, which never saw the light. Uh, and it was not even very well known until 1989, when a film about uh, those events uh, was released under the title Scandal. Right? So uh, for 10 points, you either tell me who the model was, or you tell me what these infamous 1963 events were. Directors to team six, and I have very quick. Uh, here will uh, something like uh, hold on, 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 hold on. I don't, I've not closed pounds yet. Please wait, it's your direct, but no, no, uh, no, this is too yeah, I have pounces from one, two, three, and four. Who's uh, who's direct is this? It's team six, team six is direct, yes. Um, uh, team five, if you're Pouncing, can you go ahead and pounce now? Okay, so everyone's pounced, so team six, go for it. This is Christine Kila and the perfume organization. Yeah, so uh, again, one question where everyone gets 10 points. Uh, congrats all. Uh, this is indeed uh, Christine Killer and uh, the perfume affair. Uh, so uh, a follow up on that, uh, this is just written. Uh, so all of you can attempt uh, uh, no next. Uh, this is one of the recreations by Morley of the Christine Killer photo and is modeled by a TV personality whose biggest spot in the limelight came roughly 15 years after this particular photo was taken. So this was taken again around the same times as the Profimo, uh, Profimo affair uh, uh, timelines. Uh, and these late uh, 1970 events were dramatized in a 2006 play and a 2008 movie. Both of which uh, has the other gentleman that you see in the uh, slide portraying uh, X, right? All you need to tell me is the title of the play or the movie. So it's written, no next. So all of you go ahead and pounce. I have a pounce from team six. Anyone else? I have found some team two. One, three, four, five on a pounce. Maybe you want, thing, just give us you want the name of the movie, right? Yeah, the movie or the play, both are the same. I have found some team one as well. So three, four, five. Is waiting for your pounds. I have pounds from five. Okay. Team four is waiting for your pounds alone. Okay, I will have to move on. Okay, so teams uh, one. Two, five, and six get this perfectly right. Teams uh, three and four, unfortunately, did not get this. So this is uh, Frost was at Nixon. Uh, that was Frost uh, who modeled in a similar pose as Christine Killer. Uh, the direct uh, now is going to be with team five. Okay, uh, a bit of a lengthy question, but uh, bear with me. Uh, 
following a particularly ugly event in October 2019, Nomad Studio, which is a London-based uh, brand agency, worked with an entity to come up with a campaign that was meant to run for just two weeks. It has now been running, that campaign has now been running for more than a year in solidarity with other related events across the Atlantic. According to Nomad, uh, there were two distinct design choices that were made while building the campaign. Firstly, the entire campaign is built out of black and white to stand out against the visually vibrant world of the entity they were contracted by. The second design choice has to do with the typography used in the campaign banners and ads that visually reinforce the forward campaign slogan. So two parts of the question, read through all that and try and figure out uh, uh, what this campaign is all about. And then tell me what is this forward campaign slogan that uh, was uh, created by Nomad Studio. It was meant to run for only two weeks, but uh, uh, it's been running for more than a year now and looks like it's continue, going to continue to run for quite some time. And once you have that, uh, for the second part, tell me or explain how the typography uh, reinforce the campaign slogan. So this is Team Fi's question. As I've not received any pounces, uh, let me make it a little simpler and say that uh, uh, fans of a certain sport would probably be seeing this campaign uh, uh, on a regular basis, at least uh, uh, once a week, uh, uh, you'd probably be seeing this particular campaign. So that should probably help you try and figure out what this campaign is. Uh, uh, and then you can tell me what is this four word slogan that they use. And from there, if you can try and build. Uh, team four, your second answer is something that I've already given. All in black and white is already there. But what is the other thing that they have done? Other design choice that was made, which is to do the typography. So yeah, I need a better answer for team, the second part. This is team five's question. One second, uh, Vinod. Yeah. Team four, uh, you can either give me a better answer or you can retract your bounce. Wait for it on the bounce. And uh, uh, I think just team three is the one. Uh, yeah, Ashwin, three, yeah. yeah, so Ashwin alone, uh, I think they are going to attempt to bounce. I'll close bounce with that and just wait for team three's uh, uh, answer. And team four, are you going to revise uh, your answer? We'll okay, retract team, it for now. Sure. Team four has retracted. Team three has given a brilliant answer. Uh, so they get uh, it exactly right. Uh, so team five's question. Hey, uh, this is uh, something like no, no place for hate or something like that. This is the. Uh, okay. The black and white is for the. I mean, uh, you shouldn't. Uh, uh, I mean, it stands against racism, so that's why the black and white makes sense here, right? Okay, and the second part? Gigi, do you have anything for the second part? Uh, <laughs> let's just say uh, it's a sans serif. Okay, it's a uh, sans serif. Okay, team four. Team yeah, four. I mean, we got the, I guess, no room for racism as the um, plot. And uh, I don't know, maybe the typeface is called 
I don't know, rebel or rebellion or something like that, and which okay. reflects okay. this whole thing. Okay. Uh, I'll move on. Team three pounds. So team two. Hey, so I'll go for this one. I, I think we are discussing within the team. I think it's to do with the fact it's no room for racism. I think mm -hmm. it's to do with the fact that each word is in a separate line. So it's no, then room, then for, then race. So there, there are no gaps within the different words. So there's no room. So that's how it like reinforces it. Yeah, so the separate line is not what I was looking for, but the fact that it was all crunched together, so you can look at this. Okay. Yeah. So that is how it is created. Uh, so uh, that's uh, uh, 10 points to team uh, two, uh, uh, 10 points to team three on the pounds, uh, uh, and five points to team four who said no room for racism. Uh, and the direct now will be to team one. Okay, so uh, I have more images, but let me just read through this question and then uh, Harish, maybe you can send out the other images as well. Uh, so set in 1958, after the fall of the Big Brother government, the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen Black Dossier uh, involves a chase to recover a dossier that contains the secret history of the then disband disbanded League. Uh, unlike earlier works, which are set in the Victorian era, many of the characters used in the Black Dossier were or even now are not in the public domain and hence uh, um, Alan Moore uh, became more creative in alluding to the character identities by never directly revealing who they were right uh, so I'm going to show you three images in three separate slides uh, what you see here are three people you need to identify these three people uh, for one of them the person in the middle uh, even if you don't give me the exact name if you specify a fielding position I will still give you points, right? So this is a, a the larger image. So the three people that you have to identify, right? Uh, so this is one of the comic strips where uh, uh, the two of them are discussing. Uh, one, uh, they're discussing. So this person uh, on the in the middle in the first strip uh, is uh, uh, discussing with his assistant, who is the one uh, the guy with the spectacles, right? So just read through that. That's one slide. And this is another slide where uh, this, the person who's in the middle in the, uh, in the first image is uh, talking to the other person and uh, briefing him uh, about uh, 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 the project that he's setting him on to recover the dossier, right? So one of it is pretty straightforward. Don't think too much. So three parts. So for this particular question, if you just get one part, I'm not giving you any points. You get two parts, you'll get five points. If you get uh, three parts, I'll give you 10 points. And this is in some way related to 2020. Just bear in mind. In fact, there are two ways in which you can probably connect this to things that have happened in 2020 that take that as an additional clue. So you need to give me three characters who have crossed over from three separate sources. I'll give you a little more time to read through those uh, images. I'm going to stay on this slide. And this question is with theme one. Hey, uh, do you want proper nouns for the gentleman? Or... I need proper nouns for two people at least. For the third one, basically the guy in the middle of that first image, even if you don't have a proper now, what I'm saying is if you can give me a fielding position, I will still give you points. Okay, I'll... I'll... The points when it, can you go to the images, please? Yeah, it's on your individual slides. Yeah, but let me go through it quickly. This is the... First image. This is the other image. Okay. 
Okay, so I think I heard team five is going to bounce. Okay, I have team five's bounce. So I'm just I'm awarding minus five to team five, but I'm still just going to repeat what I said already. All these three are fictional characters or crossed over from some other source. Right. Uh, I don't think anyone else is intending to bounce uh, and close bounds in three, two, and one. Closing bounce. So team one, go for it. We'll say uh, James Bond. Okay. George Smiley and the third man. That is a perfect ten points. This is indeed. James Bond, Harry Lime from the Third Man, and George Smiley. So lovely answer from Team uh, uh, One. And the uh, direct now is to Team Six. Vinay, uh, can you explain how James Bond and uh, George Smiley valued it to those? In the, in those James days? Bond is very cl clear, right? It says Jimmy, you can call me M and all that, right? So this Jimmy is basically. Is they talking oh, about okay. James? So he didn't want to call him James, so it's called Jimmy here. And what was blanked out is Harry. George Smiley is not directly alluded here. It is more to do with the appearance. And I thought because of the TCQ 2020, you should probably you would probably work it out. There's no okay. direct allusion to that. I said. And uh, the fielding position you third mentioned. Man. Third man. Third man is a fielding position, right? So this is Harry Lime from the third man. Ah, okay, okay. Okay, so uh, the direct now is to team six. Uh, so uh, you see three images here. Images one and two are of uh, a certain evangelist who's mostly depicted with an angel or a winged man by his side, normally to his left. So it's basically the angel is guiding this person in uh, doing whatever he's doing, right? So for the first part, tell me who this person is. The third image is of the harmonic scales, arguably the first documented tuning system that was created by someone. Who is this someone who created this particular harmonic scales? Uh, and then uh, putting all these together, uh, these are clues pointing to dual identities of one figure in a work. And this is uh, one of many such conflicting dual identities. So which work am I talking about? So three parts. Who is the person depicted in the first and second images? Uh, who is the person uh, uh, who arguably created the first ever tuning system, which is called the harmonic scales? And thirdly, uh, these are clues to uh, uh, the dual identities of one figure in a particular work. And that that is just uh, one of many such examples of uh, conflicting dual identities. Right? Which work am I talking about here? This is team six's question. I will close pounds in five seconds if anyone is not bouncing. Five, four, three, two, one okay closing pounds team six go for it manu you want to go i think first the first one is um is is matthew is matthew saint matthew okay uh and uh, for the harmonic system manu uh, you want to say the answer that i give okay fine <laughs> Pythagoras. Okay. Second bit. Um, and the second, uh, last bit, second. Okay, our guess is uh, Jekyll and Hyde. Jekyll and Hyde, okay. In case it is Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. So, team uh, five.
we are passing team 5 is passing team 4 team 4 i'll have to pass you if you don't have anything i will pass you on to team 3 we'll say first part is we'll stick to matthew the first talk is caravaggio's uh, said matthew uh, we'll say the tales uh, is in greek uh, so we'll say um uh one second uh do clip uh, and uh, work conflicting dual identities no pass passing team 2 team 2 we don't have anything to add so the second part will guess guide of arezo okay um third part you are sticking first and third part you are sticking with uh, no no, no third will guess count oh. of monte cristo sorry count of monte cristo count of monte cristo team 1 so we'll say okay yeah, go for it okay okay go for it okay so we'll say this is uh, matthew for the first part okay pythagoras for the second part and uh, school of athens for the third which is what i was looking for lovely answer nicely put uh, together so 10 points to team 1 uh, and 6 uh, points to team 6 who said uh, matthew and pythagoras so if you look at uh, this particular image in the school of athens it could represent either saint matthew with the angel on the uh, left of the shoulder as he is writing the or it could also be pythagoras because you can clearly see the harmonic scales there so most of the uh, individual images in the uh, school of athens uh, uh, could be one of two people and that is how it is uh, been done by rafael and this is just one example of it so nice answer by team 1 uh, 10 points to them and i'll move on uh, uh, to the next question it will be back to team 6 okay so uh, what was the two word alliterative title of uh, the daily mirror article about this performance from 1985 which we have been told this year was more of a shock than a surprise the title a play on the sensual nature of the performance had a hyphen in the first word to emphasize on the performer's nickname it also shares its name with a popular movie from about 2 years later 2 years after 1985 right so all you need to tell me is what is this two word alliterative title of uh, uh, the daily mirror article This is this team success question there is a bigger image no there is no bigger image but i think that is sufficient in my opinion because i blanked out the face of this person that i'm talking about but probably very distinctive using that see if we can work out a two word alliterative title which if a hyphen is put uh, in the first word could also be the nickname of uh, the performer and the two words are also the name of a movie from about 2 years later it's, it's exactly the same as the name of the movie or it should be modified exactly some... exactly oh. the name of the movie i have points from team 1 Uh, bounce from sorry team 5 and team 4 have bounced team 3 is also abhi the chat question man yeah it's team 6's question so uh, you can wait so it's only teams 1 and 2 have not bounced okay everyone has bounced hey i've got two bounces from team 2 that's okay so team 1 has What not bounced team? yeah yeah team 1 has not bounced so team 1 Do you want to pounce, or I will close in three, two, one? I guess team one is not pouncing. So team six, why don't you give out the answer on the mic? Dirty dancing. Yeah. So this is dirty dancing. Oh, I put the slide after. 
So this is indeed dirty dancing. So uh, 10 points to everyone uh, except team one. Congrats, Kido. And the direct now will be to team five. Okay, so this is a longish clip. So let me explain this question before I go into the clip. And I will close pounds as soon as the clip is done because it's pretty long. Uh, so this uh, what, whatever you see, the comic strip on the right, uh, uh, the name uh, of that particular uh, comic strip uh, is a pun on a popular Christmas song that was first recorded in 1971 and the over-the-top histronics of the performer in the image, right? So you need to figure out the name of the song, which is what I'm going to play and look at uh, uh, the what this person is doing. And using that, come up with uh, uh, a three-word answer, the title for this comic strip, which pretty much sounds like the name of the song itself, right? Uh, so the the song is what I'm going to play. And uh, uh, for the first part, the song, uh, uh, the clip should help. For the second part, uh, the clip will probably not help. Uh, other than the fact that uh, uh, the group of people who are actually singing it may help in a very lateral sense. Other than that, uh, there's nothing much to uh, figure out, but uh, you should probably be able to identify who uh, first recorded this version in 1951, uh, based on the fact that uh, uh, this group was headed by a former Austria, uh, Austro-Hungarian Navy officer. So just read through the second paragraph. Uh, you need to give me who first recorded the version in 1951 and what is the name of the strip. I don't want the name of the song. I want the name of the comic strip, right? So it's a longish clip around uh, two and a half minutes or so. So when that clip closes, I would have considered the pounds closed. So please pounce before that. So go into the video. Hey, we are not hearing audio. Maybe you're not responding. Now it's 20 minutes for the ambulance to the... You're not, you're not able to hear now? Yeah, very faint. Okay, I think you probably don't need this. The song starts... Is this audible? No. No? Is that... Is that audible or not? It isn't finished. Okay, so there's only one option then. I'll probably post the clip on uh, the general channel. You probably will have to take a look at it. So let me just put this clip on the general channel. You can go and take a look. Okay, I've, I put this clip on the general channel. So I'll give you about uh, uh, two minutes for you to look at it and uh, then close it. Uh, Vinit, for the benefit of those of us who can hear, can you play it, please? Yeah, I can. A homeless man died last night, a, co a, homeless man died last night, a Korean War veteran who was wearing a coat I gave to the Goodwill. It had my card in it. Toby, you're not responsible. Took an hour and 20 minutes for the ambulance to get there. A Lance Corporal, United States Marine Corps, second of the seventh. I got better treatment at Pan Moon Young. So you for stop pulling strings like this. You don't think every homeless veteran will come out of the woodwork? I can only hope, sir. When is this thing? I'm going to pick up his brother and go there now. Mr. President? I'd like to come along. Sir, your absence in the other room is conspicuous. Okay. Toby. I'd like to come along.
ओके आई अज्यूम एवरी वन हर्ट दैट आई हैव पाउंटर्स फ्रॉम टीम्स वन एंड सिक्स ओके I will wait for pawns from team 3. Uh the direct is to team 5. So uh 4 and 2. If you are pouncing let me know in the next 5 seconds. 5 okay, 4 3 2 1. Okay so uh closing pawns um team 5 go for it team 5 oh team 5 is probably still listening to it huh? <laughs> anyone from team 5 there hello Yeah, I'll give it another two seconds, but uh, I don't see any of them. Uh... Team five, anyone there? Team five, do you have a guess? Okay. Vinay, they seem to be having some uh, voice issues. They are saying they can't hear anything. Okay. I can hear. They just use sounds option. Okay. Yeah, I heard someone from Team Five. Go ahead. Yeah, we 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 saw this. Uh, so our guess is little tantrumer boy. Okay. And for the first part, second yeah. part, uh, no guesses. Pass. Okay. Team Four. So for the first part, we'll go with um, little drama boy, uh, okay. a pun on little drama boy, and again, no idea on uh, the second part here. Okay, team two. Yeah, team two. Uh, we'll yeah. go with uh, little drama boy and the trap family singers from the one trap. Which will get you ten points. So ten points to team two. Ten point or uh, five points to team four, and ten uh, points on the pounds to teams one, three, and six. So this is the little drama boy from Little Drama Boy and the Trap Family Singers. Uh, so the direct now will be to team one. Okay, so in. Okay, so in 2020, apart from the publication of a much expected and acclaimed novel, an author published a collection of essays on sporadic topics such as uh, uh, France's ancien regime uh, and the revolution, Tudor England and the court of Henry VIII, illness and the body, spiritualism and visionary experience. The collection of uh, the title of the collection is a pun on the author's name, and the word meaning a shelf above a fireplace, usually part of a frame that surrounds the fireplace. so the image is a generic image to just tell you what exactly i'm talking about when i say the shelf above the fireplace or the uh, the frame that's surrounding it right so all you need to tell me is what is the title of this collection so i have quick pounces from teams 3 and 6 and 5 uh, as well the direct is with 1 so it's one's direct one you can wait so teams 2 and 4 if either of you are intending to pounce two has pounced as well and team 4 i will close pounds in 3 2 and 1 so team 1 can you give out your answer on the mic mantelpiece yeah this is mantel pieces by hilary mantel nice answer so uh, 10 points to everyone except team 4 and the direct now will be to team 
Okay, so this 2016 post about climate change deniers quoted an unlikely source uh, from a book, uh, the cover of which is what I've given below. And there is a larger picture as well. Uh, and it heralded an equally unlikely short yet important cameo four years later from uh, a cameo in 2020. So uh, identify this guy uh, who you see in the uh, image in the uh, post, uh, who's best known for anchoring an educational TV show for children. And uh, tell me what unlikely cameo I'm talking about. So that's the larger picture of the book cover from which this guy has taken that quote. The quote is, it says it is difficult to get a man to understand something when his salary depend, depends upon his not understanding it. So this post is from 2016, but uh, it heralded a cameo uh, by uh, something that you would not expect from this particular guy. It was a short but important cameo from 2020. So who is this guy? What is this cameo that I'm talking about? The question is with Team 6. Team 3 bounces and gets it perfectly right. Uh, any other teams, if you're looking to pounce, you need to let me know in the next five seconds. Five, four, three, two, one, and closed. So, team six, go for it. Abid, say that, man. Okay, uh, I don't know. If Am I audible? My... Yeah, 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 you're, 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 yeah, you're audible. Okay, Bill Nye, the science guy, um, is the person there. And uh, okay. the cameo he made was in uh, Mank, the movie. Can you give me a little bit more? Mank, the this thing. Uh, I mean, you want a description of Mank? Or... No, I want to know why, how is that related to this quote or that book? Okay. What is the relationship between the two? So, can you go to the cover, please, uh, Vinodwan? Yeah. Yeah, that's the cover. Uh, type something. Ambit, Keshav, do you want to add to it or? He basically, uh, you know, uh, played the guy on whom the book is based. And that is? Ah, uh, uh, this thing, uh, Upton, Upton Sinclair. Yeah, that is all that I was looking for. So that quote is from this book by Upton Sinclair, which he posted in 2016. And uh, uh, it fits very well in context with uh, what the movie is about and what uh, Sinclair's role in it. And four years later, he played him in Bank. So uh, 10 points to Team 6 and uh, 10 points to Team 3 on the direct, who got everything perfectly right uh, as soon as the question was put up or some answer. Uh, now the direct is to Team 5. Okay, another bit of a longish question so please bear with me uh, so although the first mention of a particular characteristic and uh, i'm using characteristic very loosely here uh, is attributed to a historian monk uh, called saint Bede the venerable from the 8th century but it is only during the 15th and 16th century and due to renaissance art that it became widely known uh, the onset of the age of exploration and subsequent external influences led to the popularity of this characterization. Uh, but even during that time, it was an artist's choice. For example, artists from cities such as Venice and Antwerp embraced it, while Florentine artists such as uh, Botticelli and Gozzoli chose not to. 
probably because the Medici's preferred to insert themselves into most paintings uh, done by these Florentine artists, and hence uh, this particular characterization that I'm talking about uh, uh, would have been inconvenient, right? Uh, the image that you see is uh, uh, Peter Bruegel the Elder's version. Uh, that provides a further clue to the link between the age of exploration uh, because it contains uh, which shows a golden ship replacing what we typically know as a natural substance right explain again preferably with a proper noun but if you don't give me the proper noun i'll still give you points explain what characteristic i'm talking about that now is widely acknowledged uh, but is actually handed down from the Renaissance and the age of exploration. So look at the image. The image helps. Uh, the image shows the ship uh, uh, that I'm talking about, uh, uh, which is related to the age of exploration. But there is another substantial clue in the image. And then read through that entire thing. It's it's a characteristic that is attributed to a person. Right? So what am I talking about? Give an explanation of what this characteristic is about and what all this is about, which is the which is something that uh, uh, Northern Renaissance artists like uh, uh, Bruegel or Bosch uh, uh, embraced, whereas Florentine artists such as Botticelli and Gozzoli didn't. There is a big clue in the image. Uh, uh, Vinit, could you just explain the relevance of uh, Bruegel image? that is for you to figure out i'm saying all i'm saying is there is a pretty important clue there if you can figure out what aspect of it you need to look at and from there see if you can work out this characteristic that i'm talking about so it is not the image is not just about showing you the ship which i'm referring to in the question there is more from that image that you can take and use See if there's something else that is that catches your eye, and see if you can use that for uh, this characteristic that I'm talking about. Okay, so uh, Harish says I have to give a clue uh, because it probably is uh, difficult. So uh, this is something that uh, what are we talking about? And this characterization uh, is something that uh, is seen a lot in. Uh, December, you probably would have seen examples of this uh, in December. Maybe not this specific characterization, but whatever this set of uh, uh, paintings or the subject that I'm talking about, it's a subject that's been depicted by various artists, right? That subject representations of that you see normally in December. I have a bounce from team four. Team five is direct. Uh, I'll close pounds in five seconds. I have this... any... Okay. Okay, do team one probably intending to pounce. Any other team, if you are in the vicinity, you intend to pounce, call out in the next five seconds. Close pounds in five, four, three, two, one. Okay, team one alone. So, kiddo, are you bouncing? Uh, bounce from team two. Can you need to tell me a bit more in terms of what characteristic I'm talking about? What is it that I'm talking about in terms of the characteristic? Kiddo, are you bouncing? Uh, yeah, yeah, we are bouncing. Okay, wait for team one. Team two, you need to either give me a bit more or retract. Again, same thing for team one. Okay, I will. Okay, I will reserve my answer for team two i still don't have what i'm asking for uh team one i will see if there's a better answer that we get 
Okay, yeah, so team one gets 10 points having worked that out very well. Congrats team one. Team two retracts, so let's go to team five. Team five. Okay, Cameron, you want to say something or we can go with uh, whatever you say? Team five? GG. Just one second. Uh, yeah. Okay, uh, you just say it's a vacation holiday kind of thing. So, okay, no, you are way off. So, team four. Oh, sorry. Team four pawns got a negative. Uh, team three. So this basically do with the uh, imagery, the, the nativity scene. Uh, it's basically the three kings, the three magi, and also them being depicted in the dark skin and so on. So I think basically uh, it revolves around that. Yeah, yeah, that that is good enough. So uh, ten points to uh, team three. So this is specifically Balthazar, who's one of the magi, who's uh, depicted as a black person, right? And this started uh, around the time of the age of exploration when there was, uh, they started going to Africa and there was a lot of interest. So if you look at Bosch and uh, uh, Bruegel's painting, they're depicted as black, black people, whereas in uh, Botticelli's painting, they're still white people, right? But that image of Balthazar as a black person started around that time. And what I wanted to take from the image was you can actually see the black hand of Balthazar holding the ship there. So nice 10 points to team three uh, and the 10 points to uh, team one as well. Uh, I don't think I can give any other points. So let's move on to team two. Okay. So an Egyptian god was often depicted with the horns of a ram. This in turn led to the naming of certain fossils uh, that resemble the curved horns. As early as the times of uh, Pliny the Elder, uh, referring uh, uh, to those uh, uh, fossils as uh, the horns of the name of the Egyptian god, right? This association has led to the common and scientific name that uh, uh, these groups of extinct animals are known by even now. What is the one word common name? Uh, and as an additional clue, uh, it's not much of a tongue twister. I don't think anyone noted that. So I have bounces from teams one, six, and five already. Direct is with team two. So team two, it's your direct, so you can wait. Team three has bounced as well. Uh, the only team that is not bounced is team four. If you want to bounce, call out in the next five seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. So team two, can you give out your answer on the mic? Team two? Oh, uh, we'll go it was your one. direct. Yeah, this is indeed Ammonite, which comes from the horns of Ammon. Uh, so good 10 points to all teams uh, except four, and the direct now is to team one. OK, so. Um, there's a excerpt from a poem poem that's given below the poem's titled x and the wanderer which is from a 2006 poem collection titled averno that is themed around winter and death right uh, so read through the poem and identify x uh, who's being who's the subject of this poem that's for part one uh, having figured that out uh, uh, tell me why averno which is a small crater lake uh, near Naples is an apt title for this particular collection, especially considering the theme of this particular poem. So the poem collection itself is called Averno, and it's, it's specifically it, uh, makes a lot of sense considering the theme of this particular poem. And for the third part, uh, identify this poet who's known for weaving together autobiographical and mythical themes. The direct is with theme one, three part question read through that i'm not going to read it i'll give you a little bit of time and we'll try and wind up within the next uh, 10 minutes Je 
again just to call it out this is related to something in 2020 direct with team one so if any team is looking to pounce please call it out in the next five seconds uh, i think team six will pounce six is going to pounce five four three two one okay so i'll close pounds with just team sixes pounds i'm waiting for that pounds then we'll go to team one team six can you send your pounds uh we've sent it yeah i got your pounds so team one go for it okay this is uh percy from okay and uh this crater, I think, is important because that's supposed to be the through which he comes out of the underworld and goes back to the underworld after the time. Okay. Order. Okay. For the poet, <laughs> what's you know, they say that? We have to say Dario 4. Dario 4, okay. Uh, team 6 pounced, team 5. Hey, one second. Okay, pa pass. Sorry, pass. Passing team four. Oh. Team four, do you have a guess? Uh, the guess here is Louis Gluck. Okay, and the other parts? I will go with that underworld stuff. Like it's uh, like and from, from mythology, yeah, yeah from uh, yeah. mythology, like the underworld entrance is there. Yeah. So uh, yeah, I'll give ten points to Team Four. Uh, team One gets six points, and uh, ten points to Team uh, Six as well, who got everything right on the uh, pounds, right? Uh, so the direct now will be to Team Three. Okay, so the two-word name of this species of sunflower, which is native to the Americas and cultivated for its tuber, is a bit of a misnomer. The first word is believed to be a mispronunciation of the Italian word for sunflower, which is what is given in brackets there, uh, and used for it by Italian settlers in the US and has no geographic uh, connotation, religious or otherwise. The second word comes from the taste of its edible tuber, that reminded French explorers of another edible plant. Although uh, in the case of the other plant, uh, the budding flower head rather than the root is the edible portion, right? So the images that you see on the right, uh, the two images are showing the species of sunflower and uh, the root uh, tuber, which is the edible portion. The image on the left, it shows uh, uh, the flower uh, it's not the uh, flower bud, but it's showing the actual flower of this second plant, uh, the taste of which was kind of similar to the sunflower that we're talking about. So which two word uh, name are we talking about? So I already have pounces from teams one and two. Direct is with team three. Uh, so two, four and five, if you wish to pounce. Please call it out in the next five seconds. Five, four, three, two, and one. Okay, closing pounds. So team uh, three, go for it. You just give us a few seconds. It's the discussion. Sure. <laughs> Team three. Uh, the pounds is open. Oh, it's gone. No, no pounds closed. We'll say this is the uh, 
Jesus. Pass. Pass. Okay. I'll pass you. Team two. Uh, Bill Gates. This is the Jerusalem Ginger. Jerusalem Ginger. Uh, team one pounds. Team six pounds. Team uh, five. Uh, Jerusalem Apichok. Yes, sir. This gives you 10 points. This is indeed called the Jerusalem artichoke. So 10 points to team uh, 5. Uh, unfortunately, no points to team 2 for just saying Jerusalem. Uh, you wanted the full name. Uh, and the direct now will be to team 4. Okay, last three questions. Uh, so this is a screenshot from uh, uh, La Revolution. Uh, 2020 Netflix release that uh, reimagines events leading up to the French Revolution. In this fictionalized account, the aristocracy is afflicted with a unknown virus that drives them to murder common folk, which in turn uh, leads to the revolt. What physiological change is seen in aristocrats infected with the virus? That's one part. Uh, one of the key characters in the series is a physician who investigates uh, uh, murder victims and stumbles upon the virus. Who is this real-life physician, uh, best known to us uh, because of something named after him? Not because he conceived it, but because he recommended it as a more humane practice. So look at the image, and then I'll come back to the question. The image helps for both parts. So you need to tell me, one, what a physiological change is seen in the aristocrats who are infected with this uh, uh, fictional virus? And two, who is this real life physician who plays a important role in the series? Is this for team four direct? Uh, it is for team four, yes. I have pounds from team five. Who get it perfectly right. Uh, we'll also go uh, team three. Okay, team three is also bouncing. I have pounds from team one as well. Who get it right? And team three gets it right as well. Mine is working out by teams one, three, and five. So uh, four is direct. So teams two and six. If you are intending uh, to we bounce, are bouncing, uh, we are bouncing. Okay, six is going to pounce. Team two, if you're pouncing, let me know in the next uh, yeah, three seconds. Pounced. Okay, two is also pouncing. I'll wait for pounces from two and six before I go to team four. I have uh, team two's answer. Team six. Team six gets it as well. So team four, round it off and make it a full house. Team four. Uh, it's a guillotine. Okay. And uh, it's a change in blood color. If you see the image, the right side has like red blood color, but the left side has a different blood color. And what blood color is that? That's okay. It'll, it'll take points. So they basically become blue blooded, which is what royalty is supposed to have. So they literally become blue blooded because of the virus. So uh, 10 points to uh, everyone on this question. And the direct now is to team three. Okay. There is a video which I'll play. Uh, but before that, let me read through this. So Gerald Scarf is a cartoonist known for his work in Private Eye, The Sunday Times, The New Yorker, uh, in a long and distinguished career. Although he spent a bulk of his career ridiculing politicians, uh, he had some significant contributions in pop culture as well. One such project was a series of illustrations in his typical style and subject matter, which were seen by the public starting 1980. Uh, the success of this project led to another set of illustrations for a related venture starting 1986. And you could say that it was a, uh, in a sense, a promotion to a higher office. So look at the video that gives some examples of his style and identify these two related ventures. I think the politicians that stand out are quite often the wicked ones, the evil ones. When you approach policy, you think, why is the bastard lying to me? Absolutely loathe them. 
self-seeking, arrogant bastards. It's not really personal in that I dislike them. It's to do with their policies. In a way, it's the misuse of power I think I draw. They don't react with it. It's an awful truth is that it's great for them to be recognized in the cartoon. It means they've arrived. I never met Mrs. Thatcher, but she's a very good example of what the caricaturist does because I could always draw her as something sharp, acerbic, cutting. A paleontologist was walking along the Jurassic coast in Dorset and he discovered this pterodactyl. It's never been discovered before. And he came to me and said, could he name it after me? I said, well, yeah, I'm very flattered if you do that, but why? And he said, because it has such a sharp beak. It reminds me of your drawing of Mrs. Thatcher. So I now have a dinosaur named after me. It's Cuscicephalus scarfi. Okay, so that was a longish clip, and I have bounces from teams one, three, five, and six. Uh, this is uh, team three is direct, so team. Oh, it's actually team three is direct, so team three you need not have bounced. Uh, you can see that out on the mic. So team two bounces as well. So team four, only team not to bounce. Do you want to bounce? I'll give you another three seconds. Guess not. So uh, team three, can you say your answer out on the mic? Yes, minister. Yes, prime minister. That is right. So 10 points for saying yes, minister and yes, prime minister. Uh, Last question. Before that, thanks all for staying back. I it ran a little bit over the time that I thought it would take. Thank you for staying uh, all this while. It was a lot of fun hosting. Uh, hope you had fun as well. Uh, last question to team two, and open on the bounce. Okay. So an article about Rahul Tevatia's uh, incredible knock against Kings XI uh, in the IPL 2020 had the following quotes from its from his tweets from 2017, amongst others. Right? It says, uh, never set lemons, go after your dreams, don't be afraid to push the boundaries and laugh a lot. Uh, it's good for you. Keep the faith. The most amazing, amazing things happen in life. Amazing things in life tend to happen right at the moment you're about to give up hope. The title of the article uh, was the dash dash Rahul Tevatia and the art of not giving up, uh, referencing the city in which the match was played and a movie title that was similarly about not giving up and keeping the faith during dire circumstances. So all you need to do is fill, in, fill up those blanks, which is a reference to both. It's a reference to the city in which uh, he had this incredible knock, as well as uh, a movie title which was similarly about not giving up and uh, keeping the faith during dire circumstance. Considering we are moving into 2020 and hoping for better circumstances, I thought this would be a this would be a good uh, way to finish the quiz. Team six bounces and gets it perfectly right. It's team two's question. So. Other teams, one, three, four, five. Give us some time. Sure, sure, sure. Team four bounces. Team one also bounces. Team three also bounces. So team five, I guess, is the only team left. It is team two's direct. Team five, do you want to bounce? Or I will close bounce. In three, two. Hey, we are bouncing. One second. Yeah. Team five, I'll wait for your bounce. Nice try, team five, but no. Uh, team two, go for it. Uh, we'll guess the Charger Redemption. Sharja Redemption is perfectly right, a pun on uh, Shawshank Redemption, and uh, because it was played in Sharja. Uh, 